Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our last Meme Tier Monday deck of the day. This one's going to be Zed's Monastery. We're going to be playing a mostly all Ionia deck with the Monastery of Hirana. If you're not too familiar with this landmark, it has round start create a sanctuary in hand. So just one mana be able to recall one of your allies every turn. I could see a buff to this card making it where sanctuaries cost zero mana to be honest. I could see that being a nice like monastery buff, but we're playing it, you know, of course how it is now, but we're going to be, basically what we're going to be doing here is trying to pair that with a card like Greenglade Elder, that whenever you summon it, you grant all of your allies in your hand plus one plus one, or Inspiring Mentor, grant an ally in hand plus one plus zero, or Jewel Protector, grant an ally in hand plus three plus three. So you can get, you get the point here. So we're buffing up an ally in our hand. And really, like, the ally that we kind of want to buff in our hand is going to be this Navori Highwayman. Because whenever it's summoned, we summon a Brigade, Brigand, that also has the same stats as it. And so uh, if we have that very large Brigand in hand, you know, the Highwayman that we can copy it, um, then we can do cards like our Zephyr Sage, create another copy of it, play it, we get two of them. We have our Spectral Matron, pick an ally in hand, summon an exact copy of it, right? So, like, we have the, that huge Highwayman that's, like, let's say the Highwayman's a 10-10. I guess it can't be that because, well, I guess it could because of the Mentor. So, it's a 10-10, and then we Spectral Matron, we put into play, we get two 10-10s, and then that, uh, that second 10-10 will, st will stay in play because it won't be ephemeral anymore. Um, so, we can do some cool stuff like that. So, that's kind of what we're going to be doing. We have Retreat Return to also keep... Uh, putting this Green Glade Elder back in our hand. Other buff targets besides Highwayman, we have Zed, which is a great buff target, of course, because it attacks with the Living Shadow. We also have Elusive, so we're going to have Shadow Assassin, Kinku Lifeblade, another great buff target, and then even Navori Blade Scouts. We'll have some Elusives as well. And then finally, we got Ledros Atrocity, because, you know, it's Ledros Atrocity, <laughs> so we have that. Um, but then plus if we're buffing up, that's the other thing like with Ionia, we're buffing up all these things We probably want atrocity to kind of finish the game out as well Okay, so let's see how it goes. We're just gonna be playing on over in normal with Zed's monastery Lissandra Trundle will be our first deck This is the Ionia version that uses a lot of bounce cards Let's get rid of the blade scout and keep the rest because we'll have Mentor target the Highwayman, and then save two mana for a Retreat Return, I guess. We could always just play the Highwayman on turn two as a 2-2, two -two, I guess. He tried to get Callista to summon Mountain Scryer, didn't turn out great? Why not? That does sound pretty sweet. My training is unconventional. Why did that work out? Oh, it's bugged? Oh, I did not know that. I did not know it was bugged. D for two. I also did not know that. Well, good thing we didn't play the Highway Man, because they would have played the Sentry, and they would have had a good blocker. Yes, Greenglade Elder. Let's go. Greenglade Elder is such a fun card to play. So I think they're going to Avalanche. I'm going to try to get them to Avalanche. All right, so we're going to do kind of a weird play here. So we're going to go Shadow Assassin first. They Avalanche. I don't think they'll have Ice Shard. I'm hoping no Ice Shard. So they... Okay, so they go that route. Not as exciting for me. Not as exciting for me. Because they Avalanche, then I, I would have picked up the Greenglade Elder, put the Zed into play, attacked with the Zed. They did have Ice Shard. Brutal. That's fine. This is tough what's a jewel protector, whether it's the Zed or the Highwayman. 
I guess it's the Highwayman. Because the Highwayman has the summon put it into play, and so it works with the go-get-it. I think... These old eyes still see fire. Think it should just be feeding Zed? Look out for Reavers! Light the signal fires! Ages pass, yet I remain. Pledge yourself to the shadows. What will you have? We don't want any trouble. There's a lot of six sixes. You get four of them coming in. That's kind of cool. I don't really know why they make those blocks and not just like the opposite blocks of just like switch those two. That's how it is. So whenever you recall, so recall an ally to summon an exact ephemeral copy in its place, reduce its cost to zero this round. Whenever you recall the ally, it should go back to, like, all the buffs should go away, I think, whenever it goes to your hand. So I guess, like, the ephemeral one would still keep the buffs, but the one in hand does not keep the buffs, I think. So, like, if I if I recall this Highwayman, we should put it another Brigand that's a 6-6 six, six into play. And we'll have an, ev and we'll have an ephemeral 6-6. Six, six. But then we'll just get a regular 1-2 back in our hand. Ledros go get it's kind of cool. I thought about that. Oh, uh, Ledros is a play ability, so like the the one you summon won't get that ability, but then you replay Ledros and don't get it. They're down to five. Yeah, it's true. And if we had if we had Zephyr Sage, we would be able to copy the zero mana Ledros with with Zephyr Sage. That's true. My life for the order. So many avalanches. Are they out of avalanche? Is that even possible to be out of avalanche?
Ice Shard. One, one. That's probably too greedy of me to not keep the uh, go get it available. You know, just attack, just keep go get it available. But, um, you know, we're a Nav Navori Highwayman deck. And how many times do I actually cast Navori Highwayman? So, played the Highwayman, and the opponent took the, the honorable death of the Ice Shards, killing them. Okay, yeah, good, good question, Shadow. Um, I'll answer that here. All right, we got Draven Ezreal. Yeah, Hawkeye actually passed away last January. Um, Hawkeye had developed um, cancer in his tongue. Hawkeye was my cat. Developed cancer in his tongue, and so he just couldn't eat anything anymore. Um, just wouldn't wouldn't eat, wouldn't drink anymore. Basically, couldn't, and uh, you know, so we had to put him put him down. Yeah. So I, I still have the two doggos though that were always that you know like Hawkeye was always in the stream room right and I was always on stream that's why I, you know changed my name to Hawk Tie to honor Hawkeye. But uh, I you know, the two dogs were always in the living room before but now the the two dogs are just here in the stream room always with me now. All right, Draven Ezreal. So we're gonna keep the Green Glade Elder but we're also going to just kind of mulligan all these other things because Green Glade Elder does want you to have a lot of allies in your hand to be able to buff. All right, Ballistic Bot on two. Progress. Yeah, Hawkeye was a really unique cat. He was, he was, he was the best cat. Because, you know, cats don't normally, like, whenever you, like, something that was really cool about Hawkeye, um, for me, we are talking about my, my cat that passed away last year that, why I named Hawkeye. Um, you know, like, if you, like, call your cat's name and, you know, like, you're in a different room, you call them, they, they're just like, whatever, man, right? Like, that's, that's what cats do. Dogs will come, will come over, they'll be like, oh, yeah, what's up? Cats, not so much. But Hawkeye wasn't like that. Hawkeye would, um, you know, I could be in a different room, I'd call Hawkeye's name and, and he would come running. He's a special cat. And so some of my viewers on my stream, whenever I streamed Magic and stuff, um, whenever Hawkeye passed away last year, made a Hawkeye picture, which is like, is way out up there now, but that picture that you can't quite see, that actually is like, it's like Hawkeye that's kind of made like a Johnny. Um, and it looks really cool. So they got that picture up here. That's my one picture here. Okay, so they're going to use the Whirling Death to try to kill that thing. We'll just Homecoming put the Draven back into their hand, which also gets rid of this Whirling Death for good. Yeah, so that's my Hawkeye memorabilia there. It's always sad, you know, losing a loved a loved pet like that, but you just gotta remember the good times. My previous game tag, I just used my name, actually. Um, but I had my name with MTG in it, and so then I switched over to Rune Terra, so I didn't want to keep MTG in the name. And so I wanted to kind of create something that was like just like uh could go with any kind of game whatsoever. End up switching games later or something. I recall my training. Inferior design. Wow. That can't be a good trade for them. Ugh. 
I want to retreat, return that, and keep on doing that, but, I mean, we are getting, we're getting rid of a Ballistic Bot that's creating these free ignitions. So yeah, I just have I have to take the trade even though I don't want to. Don't blink or you miss me. Four damage to it. So they still get the four four, or like the four cost unit, the four cost follower, but they don't get a target for Ezreal. Activate trap. Got him. I'm not sure if I'd be the one laughing right now, Israel. We had our highwayman trap. Which they never expected. No one ever expects the highwayman. We're at seven mana next turn, which is rough. I wish we had eight. I wish I could go jewel protector plus Zed next turn. I guess you could play like Life Blade and Zed. But then I don't have a lot for the protector. Step Let's still go homecoming next turn. Without a sound. Some people just live the life. Five damage and probulator. Some people just live the life. Blech. So those are the first two targets for Ezreal. Not sure which one of these to put back into their hand, Ezreal or Neverglade Collector. It's a lot easier for them to just replay Ezreal than to replay Neverglade. So I guess I go that route. Just cost more. Dang. Because I did really want to put this back into my hand so I could buff it up with the Jewel Protector. We're still going to have a pretty good next turn. We're going to have Spectral Matron put in Blade Scout and then Blade Scout. So two 5-4 elusives and an 8-8 eight, eight fearsome next turn. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. All right, so let's give it a try. Ooh, the Zephyr Sage. So this is something to remember about Zephyr Sage that I kind of always forget. Is that Zephyr Sage creates a copy of any card and it doesn't have to be a unit. I kind of think it always has to be a unit, but it's it's any card at all. So you can have Zephyr Sage copy Atrocity, for example. So we could get two Atrocities that way. I'm not sure. With Zephyr Sage, the question was, does it copy the champion spell as the champion spell and not the original version of that spell? I don't know. 
honestly. I'm not sure how that works. So I don't know if you if you can copy a champion spell and then that champion dies, then it flips up. So then your regular champion spell goes back to your champion and then your Zephyr Sage goes back to a champion as well. I, I don't know. Because it does say exact copy. So yeah, I guess I guess so. Because yeah, because you could cha you could copy champions with this. It's not exact copy of a non-champion card or anything. So yeah, so yeah, I would assume so. That sounds right. That's weird how they don't show us what they discard. I know they, they discarded the... Uh. Pretty good for them to have. He discarded Ask, Axe and um, Static Shock. I saw that they discarded Static Shock for the other one, but I don't know why this doesn't show Static Shock. It's not bragging if you could back it up. Yeah, we got that's 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 what we got to try to do. We got to try to copy atrocity and win next turn. And basically hope they don't have any removal for a 8-4 or 5-4 or really just kind of any removal at all cuz remember they have this Neverglade collector that also drains if they kill their own things. This is going to be close. I mean, block, block the 2-2, two, two, I don't think I do. I don't think I block the 2-2, two, because two, blocking the 2-2 two, two makes it, you know, gives, like, these things two health, makes it easier to kill these things, drains for them, gets them a higher life total at 11. I only save one life, because it's still, you know, so I would save one life. It's just, I don't think it's worth it. I think it's just kind of, I just have to kind of go for it. Um... I just have to go for it and just hopefully I can do 10 points of damage to them. This does turn on Whirling Death by attacking first. Yeah, I don't think they have Whirling Death without having Draven in play. If they had Draven in play, you know, then they would could have it. But. Yeah, they passed me anyway. So, just gotta hope that we have it. Because I'm not, you know, not going to let them play Decimates and all that kind of stuff. Because they only have three cards in hand. Oh, man. They are fast spells. What are they doing? What are they doing? Why not just Mr. Chop me? Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. They had multiple Mystic Shots. Obviously, we couldn't survive through that anyway. This is a more difficult matchup to win than that previous one. That's gone, and Retreat Return... I do love Retreat Return, but... All right, I'm going to keep it, because I do love Retreat Return, but they have, like, overwhelm... I don't know. Let's get it, crew. The one spring for each crab I saw today. So this is a pretty aggressive matchup. I don't think I have time to sit around and... Um, you know, normally we, like, try to sit around and buff up this Highwayman. I don't think we have time, so we're going to just be playing the Highwayman on turn two. Usually we would just save the two spell mana for retreat. Without a sound. Without a sound.
So I could play the Shadow Shift on like the Highwayman and then level up Zed that way. Then it would be the two Living Shadows with Nexus Strike. No. I don't know. Nah. Yeah, so it level Zed and deal one extra damage to them, but then I wouldn't have this 2 2 in play and instead I have the 1 2 in hand. They're gonna have these powder monkeys. Lots of powder monkeys. Lots of powder monkeys. Said so. We've been they cannot strike what they cannot see. Monkey art, monkey army v life blades. Let's go, life blades. Take down that monkey army. The army of monkeys. Monkey Idol has always just been a really underrated card. Monkey Idol is awesome. It's always been an underrated card. So we kind of ran out of stuff, right? Like, unfortunately, nothing in our hand really does anything. So, yeah. I would, I would have loved to have that card. I can play this Shadow Shift, I guess, but I don't... It, it doesn't do anything. Get it, go get it. Go get it helps us helps allow us to block with lifesteal elusives easier. There's plenty of killing left. That's not worth it. Yeah, we could have attacked with Highway Man and go get him. I don't I don't think that's worth it. I love the homecoming draw. Cause I, so presumably they just buffed up one of their champions plus three plus three that had the overwhelm, like I said, Juani or a gangplank. And so the homecoming draw is nice. Okay. So you block there, you block there. Um, four, so you block there. I take three. Yeah, so basically... If they have something that stops this homecoming, we are kind of dead anyway. But yes, yeah, putting Gangplank first is just not the play to do. Because Gangplank had to, like, you had to put the, the monkey first, do Nexus damage, then Gangplank levels up and would have been a little bit bigger. But all right, that'll do. We'll take it. We'll take the win. Life Blades. Defeated Monkeys. Dragons. Let's go back to facing monkeys, not dragons. <laughs> I'd rather face monkeys. I uh, don't need this. Jewel Protector is a little slow. This is a slow hand, but Jewel Protector is great. And sped up a little bit. Fedricide protect me. Wow, what a blocker. My training is unconventional.
definitely no reason to play Blade Scout and just get two damage in whenever if we draw like Green Glade Elder, the Blade Scout's gonna be bigger, or you know, we can protect her this Blade Scout and get like a lot of it and you know, Matron, you know, like we have we have the ability to have this Blade Scout do a ton of damage later if that's how the game plays out. Dealing two and then just like sitting here as a two one that doesn't do anything, not worth it. Dragon blood, Demacian heart. Let the blood boil, half dragon. They are nothing. Turn three attacking Shivana is not good. Silent as death. Love a retreat return. Would love that's that's the card that I want. I want to be able to block with the Elder, retreat it, return it, buff up all this stuff. Retreat returns the best draw in our deck right now. What's the fire breath this time? A soldier should know to stay out of the way. And they're emptying their hand fast for a dragon deck. Rouse your kind, dragon! Not exactly a retreat return. So Highwayman or Life Blade? I guess Second Zed is basically Retreat Return. I walk your path alone. Worse than Retreat Return, but basically. Must die. Nothing escapes my notice. You cannot escape. What? How is this living shadow not blocking? What's the living shadow doing over here? I will teach you. What, what's going on? Why would living shadow not be blocking? Okay, it blocks. It was just a okay. So it was a visual bug. Okay. Yeah, y'all, y'all are right. Visual bug. I was confused there for a little bit. They cannot hide. Not going to be easy to defeat this leveled up Shivano with the strafing strike and everything. I think our Opponent probably has this. They had a good hand. Doesn't mean we're not going to try, though. Just saying they probably have it. That would have been a better card to play with my three mana. Three, four, five. The the Love it. Love it. From the all these, all these things were dying anyway. None of them are important. So we got that fight spell out, out of their hand before we played other things that were much more important. <sighs> are we just going on the highway, man? How are we doing this? Let's try the Highwayman. You know, like, that's kind of what our deck's about. Let's give it a try.
Mind Splitter is a little rough. So would I rather have them at 7 life? I need to bounce one of these two with Retreat. Would I rather have them at 7 life or have the Mind Splitter at 2 health? You get to choose. Either it's 14 and 2 health or 7 and you know, an 8-8, eight, eight, an 8 health. Yeah, Vox made this. Mind Splitter. Maybe it's recall this because so then they don't create another dragon for, for the Vox. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh! I ran out of time? I ran out of time. Yeah. Ran out of time. All right, so both. Actually, that's probably the smart play, honestly. We we'll just do both. This is actually probably the best play possible. We're smart. We get to pick this matron up. The matron was going to be stunned anyway. This is probably just the best possible play. Man, we're smart. The real play was pick the matron up. <laughs> Because of sharp side, I have to block the two nine powers. I would rather block the Vox that keeps getting everything. All these dragons. Yeah, right now they have ten cards anyway. They can't even put another dragon in their hand. I don't know why the one one's not attacking. Like especially they have sharp sight. Like that one one not attacking is just egregious. If they would have just attacked for the 1-1, one, one, it would have been lethal. Play that first, see if we drew something a little bit better than that, but we did not. You'll thank me later. I have a million cards in hand. No, I'm going I'm I'm going matron put scout into play and then scout. We get two scouts. We attack with the matron anyway. Trade with one of the dragons. Guess we attack with that. No sharp sight. So they had the kill if they would have attacked with the Herald of the Dragons. They realized that afterwards. But they did not. And there we go. We got the elusive kill. Wow. Yasuo! Man, it's been a long time since I've played against Yasuo. Opponent, bring in the hype, bring in some Yasuo. Let's go. Love this hand. Uh, the Blade Scout could be mulliganed. The other three are great. I, I could mulligan the Blade Scout, actually. Look for something better than that, but... Oh, we don't have the attack token on turn three? They're playing Inspiring Mentor? I'm playing Inspiring Mentor. I can't Inspiring Mentor my Inspiring Mentor. I don't love that trade because I'm playing Retreat. Don't let the 
fluffy tails fool ya. I was never fooled. So I should have traded. Should have traded two ones, you know. Especially if I knew I was going to draw a green glade elder. Definitely should have. Got life blade. I'm at what nine? They'll never see me coming. You'll soon understand my methods. Do not fear the shrouded path. Definitely considering playing like the three two, like the worst Zed, keeping the better Zed with the retreat hand to get a guile out of their hand. I wonder what this what card this mentor just targeted. Cut the breath from them. What card did that mentor just target? Inspiring mentor, that is. Tales of our past are seeds for our future. Step lightly. All will kneel before Noxus. Wonder if you can make a re retreat return watcher deck. Yeah, I'm not sure if Watcher goes with, or like just the return part, right? Like, so, okay, you play your eight drop, you retreat it, but then the return part. Um, they cannot strike what they cannot you can do it, you know, like you'd have to definitely use like ice pillars and try to get like Watcher to cost zero. And then you you can burst speed with the return and put Watcher into play for burst mana where they can't respond to the ability at all because then you get to still, you know, then you still have priority and you attack afterwards. Which I guess we, yeah, I guess we did do that, didn't we, with Ionia and Trundle. I guess we have played that before. Now who's got the upper hand? Here's our chance. They don't have many cards left. Attacks. Darn. This isn't part of the training. They attacked. Yeah, I'm glad they attacked with the 6-6, six, six, so now that my Zed can attack more freely. I have come for the unforgiven. Underestimate. I dare you. That was only a 4-3. Yeah, because so the Zed was gonna get stunned, so instead of the Zed getting stunned, I did the retreat return. And then it also was like one less thing for them to stun or recall for I don't know, Blade Twirler. 
and for Legion General. Here's our chance. That's a problem. We were all... It was all fun and games now until Yasuo shows up. Now... Now we're pretty dead. Yasuo cards still win the game. <laughs> you know, like Yasuo cards and Yasuo decks. Still good. What'd you miss today? You missed some really good Rune Terra. We had a lot of fun decks today. Zoe Nautilus, Celestial Snapvine. Lissandra Lux was a sweet deck that um, honestly was good, but just got fairly unlucky for the games. Um, basically, the Lissandra Lux was like a ramp deck. Um, that my opponents four you know like we won game one and then four games in a row my opponents just had like the like the 20 percent like the 20 percent of the deck that mattered in the matchup they had all of those cards and and won and like they didn't have like the whole the other 80 percent of the the deck like the part of the deck that i just didn't care about at all and so it was really frustrating they just had like the exact cards that were really good in that matchup, and that happened four times in a row. It was so frustrating. They cannot strike what they cannot see. Yep, we were doing good until this Yasuo. Another guy as well. That's too bad. Okay, so pretty cool deck here with the Zed's Monastery. The Matron was really good. I wouldn't mind having more Matrons in here. Um, yeah, but like, you know, buffing up our stuff and then like Matron put it in, into play in Ephemeral Copy. That was really good, especially with the Blade Scout, with the Elusive. We didn't draw Monastery any game if we played five games and we mulliganed and everything we never mulliganed a monastery away we just we never saw a monastery in any of the five games that's pretty weird we only saw one key guardian i mulliganed away one key guardian and that was the only time we saw a key guardian we didn't you know draw one ever and we saw one in one opening hand but that was it for that card so that was kind of weird how we how we basically never had those cards um I could see playing more Atrocity in this deck, to be honest. I could see playing just... Like, I don't even know if Key Guardian is anything you ever need, honestly. I could see just playing more Atrocities for how we buff these things up. I could see that and going for that Nexus damage, like, with these Elusives. This did seem like a good Atrocity deck from those games that we played. I like I like Ionia card. I like these... This kind... I like... I really like Green Glade Elder decks. I, I enjoy playing Green Glade Elder quite a bit. But yeah, I could I could definitely see playing more atrocities maybe over some key guardians. It does seem like we could use another champion, but I don't know exactly what champion that would be. I think probably the best champion would be Thresh for our for this deck. Maybe we could buff up some Thresh and make Thresh, you know, like go <laughs> jewel protector on a Thresh, make it like a 6-9 challenger. Zephyr Sage was okay. Yeah, Zephyr Sage was okay. If Monastery is never going to show up, or if it's going to be something you don't really need anyway, maybe you... I know it's Zed's Monastery is the deck, but maybe like a better... Maybe you don't actually really need Monastery. Would it be possible? Because, of course, you want the most units uh, available with Green Glade Elder. Would it be possible to play, an, like, three Thresh in here and another Atrocity? And maybe just get rid of Monastery and get rid of Key Guardian? And just buff up these Threshes. Like, Threshes... Because Thresh does a really good job controlling the board and slowing the game down, right? Which is kind of what you want with, like, these buffs and, like, these elusives. You want to, like, slow, like, their other attackers down. And so even, like, ha having a Green Glade Elder or two 
um, with the Thrash and the Jewel Protector with it. I could see that doing some good work. I could see that doing some really good work there. All right, but there we go. So there's there's Zed's Monastery. Um, you know, it's supposed to be a Monastery deck. We didn't really play it, but I would kind of re recommend maybe try this out with like Thresh and an extra Atrocity in here. That could be pretty sweet. Anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, as always, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. Like, how'd you enjoy this one? What What do you really like to play with Greenglade Elder? Love to hear your Greenglade Elder ideas. Um, what do you think of like these changes with putting in Thresh instead of Monastery? Um, I'd like to, yeah, give me those, give me that feedback. What do you think of that kind of change with that deck there? All right, but anyway, that's going to be it here for Zed's Monastery. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.